this has been a a different eleventh hour because I'm remote and we were uh, we were dealing with a lot of things trying to get get things together for you. But you know that's yesterday to tell John about. So this has like been end a, time army, isn't a different eleventh Spiritual hour army, because I'm like remote and we, we have were, to be ready to just we do whatever with a we lot need of to things be doing. tring to get in get the spirit to get make it work. But you know that's yesterday to tell John about. Like friend, friend, uh, tune in a different eleven I got to see a little bit of chat this morning. We have to be uh, ready to just really do the chat. We need that thing thing to do trying to get uh, in the same together. It's just what you know. That's 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 what
And then they, they try to say, oh, the 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 some of the ceremonies, they have the golden head. And so what you're looking at, and then they start to see these things, they put on the meeting, it's a guy dressed like a child, and they enjoy like a Roman day, as a man sits there in a golden head, and so what you're looking at. And just and, when and they start to see these things, the Olympics, my friends, are all dressed like a child. So this thing has never been a joy like they try to say. It's still so good. It's all about going to play. And so what you want to have. Just and, and it goes back to, see to the plan the Olympics to bring the seed of the serpent into the serpent. So this serpent. thing has never and left. Now, now in Isaiah 4, it's still the scriptures of the Jesus. Thou art not fallen in hell, O Jesus, the Son of the Lord. And it goes back to the plan of the Olympics to bring the seed of the How did you fall from heaven into the serpent? So this thing has never left. Now, in Isaiah 4, it's still the scriptures of the Jesus. He said, how did you do it? How are you cut down on the ground? You just did it. To the plan and then he tells how he did. How did you fall for Because he said in his heart, I will say, now I will say, I will say, I will say, what is it? How did you Is that how again were you cut down when God created the heavens and the earth? And the then he tells how he did. The earth he made because he said in his heart, Isaiah chapter 45, I will say, I will say, I will say, everything that when God created, so when God created the heavens and the earth, and he literally started. Out of his creation's work, he might not be. And everything begins to be blood. And it was a revelation of life. So it was God's revelation of life. And he released it. And it was out of his creation's work. It was manifested. This everything begins to be blood. And the angels have never seen it. And it was a revelation of life. So it was God's revelation of life. And it was a revelation of life. Out of his grace, they said they shouted. It was manifested. This not only means that they were shouting and the angel side of what they saw, but it means that they were all together in the freak with foundation and sound. That's why you see us on the side. That's why I take that as free report. This not only means that they were shouting and worshiping the angel side of what they saw, but it had a sound. They were telling John about how they were free with foundation and sound. That one knows. That's why you see us. It said, but when they shouted for joy, it says that, that Lucifer had that the light of the house was free. He bore the light of God. He was walked up in the earth. He was a son of his father. And these are revelations of God. And revelations of God. And so when they shouted for joy, it says that and all the other cherubs, the light of the house was free. He bore the light of God. But he was a mortal for one. He was a living instrument. He had these revelations. He had these high vessels. He would lift himself. And all he would walk up and down on stone like a fire, and he'd find a revelation of what God was going to make. He had put in the earth, and he had put in the earth, and he would lift and he would lift the center of the earth, and he would lift himself up as you and all he would walk up and down on stone like a fire, and he'd find a revelation of what God was going to make. And he would sing it out in the earth. And it would hit this crystal and he would lift it from around the earth. The sin of the scripture calls it the slaves of God. And it would hit this crystal and he would find it written into a sound. And it would carry the sound. He would sing it out. Most beautiful. And it would hit this crystal and he would lift it. It would go around the earth. And all the creation scriptures he calls it the slaves of God. And it would hit this just a sound. And it would carry the sound. And it would carry the sound. And it would hit this crystal and he would lift it. And it would hit this crystal and he would lift it. He would go around the and earth, and all one day Lucifer was walking up and down in the midst of the storm. And it was just on the great bright revelation shot bring in the earth. And it was the revelation of when he took it and began to and sing one day Lucifer write the music and sing the melody. And it was just on the great bright revelation shot music. There's always a sound and it was the revelation and when he saw. And begin to and un one day it was the revelation of music. It was the revelation of just a man. The revelation of the human being. There's always a sound. God was getting ready to create. And when he saw that, he was going to create an air. Someone to revive. He could fellowship with on his own. It was a revelation. Somebody could walk and talk with him. It was a revelation of the human being. And when Lucifer saw that, he was getting ready to create. It filled with God. He was going to create an air. 
couldn't stand the thought of being subordinate. He had the anointing. And because of his beauty, he was pride in his will. And he went before the court of heaven, Psalm 8, he had a record of Psalm 8, he was a record of what he said. And what, because of what he said, oh God, his pride exited in the world of all the earth. And he went before the court of heaven, Psalm 8, he had a record of what he said. And then he just, and then he just, and he learned to that, he said, what is a man? We have a record that your mind is. And what, because of what he said, oh God, his pride exited in the world of all the You've made him a little lower than you. And he went before the court of heaven, Crown him with his glory, glory and honor. You give him dominion, and then he just works on your hands. What is a man? The fowl of the air, the cattle, the earth, over all the earth, over everything in the earth, and in the whatever you made him a little lower than you. You give him this creature's dominion. What is this creature's dominion? And then he just works on your hands. What is a man? The fowl of the air, the cattle, the earth, over all the earth, over everything in the earth, and whatever you made him a little lower than you. You give him this creature's dominion. How that is never gives you to be no there. Just to pull back. What is a man? A boy can have a soul. Who would have ever thought that the anointed chariots would have come and challenged the most powerful in heaven? How that is never gives you to be no there. It was an unheard of thing. What is a man? A boy can have a soul. That's the hope of an ever thought that the anointed chariots would have come and challenged the most powerful in heaven. How excellent is the chain of the earth? Who set thy glory? It was an unheard of. Let's just listen. Yes. 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 And you will find out. I want you to see it because, because of where I'm about to go. What's how excellent is the change? He says, O oh Lord, our Lord, thy glory is the burden of the earth. It was an unheard of. Let's just listen. Then he says, I will find out. I want you to see it because of where I'm about to go. What's how excellent is the change? He says, O Lord, our Lord, he said, I will find out from this. Whatever this creature is, is out of the way, just let them out of the way. And when they're even nursing the breast, you see it's the sound. Something was in the head that they can stop. Oh, Lord, I'll stop. He said, out of the mouth of these, they can be a creature. And so now you understand why I'm losing. When they're even nursing the breast, you see it's the sound. Something was in the head that they can stop. Oh, Lord, I'll stop. He said, out of the mouth of these, they can be a creature. And so is the now you have to say, I'm losing when there is a sound from heaven of abortion. Stop the sound of the sound. Stop the sound of the sound. Stop the sound of the sound. And so he says, When I consider the heaven of the word, so is the now you have to say, which thou hast ordained. Then the question comes, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Someone may say, how do you know that's an angel doing that? I thought David wrote that. David did write it. David is a prophet. And in Hebrews 2, you find out that a certain angel said this when it retells the whole quote. Said a certain one talking about angels said this in a certain place. And it means he earnestly protested. So here you have a protest. That's why it opens up, O oh Lord, all capitals, O oh Jehovah, O oh Yahweh, our master. How excellent is your authority in all the earth. He brings this case and he says, what is man that you're mindful of him or the son of man that you would visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels. Think of that. That word angels is the word Elohim. He said, you've made him a little lower than you. You've crowned him with glory and honor. See, God wasn't just manufacturing a man. God was reproducing himself in the earth as a family. He wanted a family. And this new family could walk with him and talk with him on his own level. Somebody he could have fellowship and communion with. He was creating his heir. And to be the heir of the king, you had to have this kind of authority. And so now Lucifer is discovering what he made the whole earth for was to give it to the man. That's how the scripture says he made the earth for the children of men. It's our inheritance. He gave it to us for an inheritance. And we are his heritage. Hallelujah. That's why he's complaining here. He said, everything you made with your hands, you've given it to him. 
Imagine this. And this angel thought that there was nothing higher than him. He thought he was the highest of all the creation, the created beings, and all the other angels didn't carry this anointing. There wasn't an animal in the earth that carried it. Nothing in the earth could carry this anointing. And yet he's the anointed cherub. So he thinks, what's above me but God? I didn't know there was a place open between me and God. I might have wanted that position. Well, he did want that position. And so this is why he talks about his hands and what he made with him and crowning man with glory and honor. Then he said, you made him to have dominion over all the works of your hands. We just found out he created the sun and the moon and so forth with his fingers. You made him to have dom dominion over all the works of your hands. You've put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and beast of the field and the fowl of the air and the fish of the sea and whatsoever passeth through the paths or the jet streams of the seas. And then he closes the court case. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Now, how did Lucifer learn so much about that man? How did he learn about you and my authority? He did it when he picked up that stone of fire and he was going to sing the song. He had to write the music. He had to play the music and he found the revelation and he had to sing the revelation so that the creation could prepare for what was coming, just like he had done everything else. And in the revelation, he found these facts out that this is the dominion of the man. Notice it's always the word dominion is tied to a man. It's always tied to a man. You've given him dominion over the works of your hands. Domain, dominion of a king. That's why everything now, you're going to notice a pattern here as we go. I'm, I want to tell you, and I want to tell my partners what's going on globally. Don't lose sight of, a, of this world vision of what Satan's trying to do. Everything else is below that. I know we get mad at politics and politicians, but they're all part of the plan. This that The wicked ones are part of the plan Satan's using to bring about this top vision. And this is the vision. This has always been the vision of him. And so you see in Isaiah 14, then, when he starts talking about how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, a prophet looked down through time to see it. And he said, O oh, son of the morning. Well, he's revealing who he is. Jesus is the bright and morning star. He's the son of the morning. That means he was Jesus' personal angel. He worked with the word very close. That's why he had to be anointed. That's why he could walk up and down in the revelations of the word. He worked with the word. And a man rises or falls to his own master. That's why Jesus had to face his own servant, the one who used to be his servant on the Mount of Temptation. So he says this, how art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, now we know what he did. He said in, the, in his heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. When it came time to sing the song of the man that was coming and the man's dominion, he sang it about himself. He didn't sing it about the man. Everything you see here is dominion of the man. And if you could translate the Hebrew words and look at a lot of this down through here, even from uh, before verse 12, you find out that it talks about vials and, and blood sacks and stuff like that. And then you see back, eyebrows, skin. It's, it's the song of the man. And when he saw that, that man had that kind of dominion and it filled him with violence and rage. He brought a court case in heaven and this is what got him thrown out. Then he comes down here and he starts singing this song. The day the creation gathered around to hear the beautiful song of God's heir. He sang it about himself. And the prophet Isaiah told us how he fell. He said, you, you were son of the morning. He said, you're the light bearer. You work with the word himself. How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? 
you said in your heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. He's singing this song. He's writing this song about himself. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. That's where God's throne sits. He wanted to sit beside him in the north. People say he wanted to just be God. Well, I'm sure he would have liked that, but watch this. Listen what he says. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, showing he was on the earth. He would ascend above the heights of the clouds. And here's the line that puts it all in perspective. I will be like the most high. There's only one creature in the image and likeness of God. And that's you. That's the man. He wanted to be a man. That's why he wanted to that position. He wanted to sit by God in the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. He wanted to inherit the earth. He wanted everything. He wanted it all. He wanted the, your position, my position. And then Isaiah said, but yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. Now, let's jump immediately over to Genesis chapter 3. And I want you to see this in Genesis chapter 3. Now, yeah, well, let's see here. Well, let's look at Genesis 1 first, verse 26 through 28. And look what it says here. And God said, let us make man in our image after our, our likeness and let them have dominion. Whoa, now I, I want you to start tying this thread together. Dominion. Remember over there, it said you've given him dominion over all the works of your hands. A domain, a kingdom, a, a dominion. And so, you, you know, so he has this dominion. And here he was, look at how it comes up again when God, now, this is after the world imploded. Everything fell apart. And God put it back together. And he put it back together. Uh, and you see it in day one, day two, day. He begins to put it all back together. And then he starts with the man again. This is what started the war of Lucifer. Jeremiah 4 talks about it. Around verse 24, you can read about it, how it happened. When there was a time and a place when there was no... Uh, no man, but yet there were birds, mountains, fruitful places, cities. Everything was being prepared, but there was no man. It fell apart over the war of you and me, over our position as the heirs of God. Now watch this. He said, so when it comes time to put it back together, he gets back to the man. And he says, let us make man in our image after our likeness. In other words, our heir. This is my heir, the father said. And the word God is Elohim, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So he said, this is after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now that word creepeth is added. Anything that creeps on the earth. That was added. Lucifer didn't really mention creeping upon the earth. But now the Lord is giving us a heads up of something that's coming. And God created man. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. Subdue it. Subdue it. Now we have to think about this a minute. If it's in a perfect paradise and everything is perfect and it's all beautiful and lush and everything is right, then why would he have to be told to subdue it or put something under his feet? And it's, it's called an it. And then he says, and have dominion. There's that line again, over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So he's talking now about having dominion again. 
And he says, there's something you're going to have to put under your feet and subdue it. And there's no explanation. Adam needed none. He knew exactly what it was. Well, what was it? Well, if we're going over to chapter 3 and verse 15, after the serpent had, had um, deceived the woman, the man was not deceived. The New Testament tells us that. It says the man was not deceived, but the woman was deceived. But the man was not deceived. He committed high treason. And you can find that in Genesis 3, real easy, and uh, where it says she took of the fruit and turned to her husband there with her. Well, let's just do it. We're, we're in an in-depth Bible study right now. So let's do this thing. It says in Genesis 3, verse 1, now the serpent was more subtle. Now watch this, or cunning than any beast of the field. Now that word cunning is something to be remembered than any beast of the field, which the Lord God, God in his government of seed time and harvest had made. And he said unto the woman, the serpent did, yea, hath Elohim said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Now listen to what she said. God said this. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. But God didn't say it. The Lord God said it. It was a point of harvest. If you do it, it'll bring up death. And here the serpent conveniently left out the name Lord. In other words, God and his government, God that operates that court system. He conveniently left that out. And listen to what he says now. But when the woman, I oh, said, then the, the, for God hath, doth know Elohim that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, this is in verse five, and you shall be as gods knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. He was there the whole time. He was standing right there. And the eyes of them both were open. And this is the first record of the woke agenda. Their eyes were opened. This is the first record of the woke agenda. You think it's something new? Nay, it began right back here. And they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. So the serpent told them in the woke agenda said, if you eat of this fruit, you'll be as God. You can determine what you are, what you want to be, who you're going to be. You know, it doesn't make, in other words, nowadays you'd say, if God made you a, a man, you'd be a woman if you want to. He made you a woman, you'd be a man, you'd be a moose, you'd be uh, uh, anything you want. So what is he trying to do with trying to confuse this? You will be as gods. Choose your own identity. Choose your own thing. Why? Because if you can identify with anything, you can be anything you want to be. Now, you're about to learn something. Watch. This is up here in this realm. You can be anything you want to be. You can be as gods. This is the way it works. You'll be as gods. There is no harvest for what you do. You'll be as gods. Choose your gender. Choose your identity. Choose anything you want to do. Why would he teach that? Why would that agenda be so big to put in the minds of people? Because I am going to bring the seed of a serpent into this earth. And you choose, you can choose to identify with animals of any kind, even serpents. You can do, we've got to get their mindset to this, to where they're just, they, they, they're gods. They can do anything. So now that's how that happened. So it, it's vital that he introduces such a woke agenda. It's vital that he does that. or he, And it's all to get this seed of the serpent into the earth. Well, you're not going to have a seed of a serpent mingle with a human of any kind in any form or fashion if you don't identify with everything that comes along 
even a semi truck, if that's what you want to identify with. That's what they teach you. Now watch this. In, ver in verse 14 of chapter three, and the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, that's the creeping thing, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life, and I will put enmity, enmity, look at this, this is, see what it says, I will put enmity, or war, between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And notice that he moved on. He just moved on after that. God said that verse and that prophecy right there in Genesis 3.15, as if everybody standing there knew exactly what he was talking about. God didn't bother to tell you what he meant. And notice nobody there asked questions. Nobody asked one question at what he was, what he meant by that. It's because they all knew what he meant by that. The serpent knew. The woman knew. The man knew. They all knew of the plan to bring the seed of the serpent from the world that was into this time to try to get Satan a back, eyebrows, and skin. They all knew this to bring the Antichrist in one day. And now you understand something. Now you can grasp real quick what Adam was knew he was supposed to do in, in subduing the earth and having dominion. He said, subdue it. Adam knew from the day he opened his eyes and received that charge, there is a serpent, a seed of a serpent trying to make its way into this earth. It's trying to take away all dominion. It's trying to take away your dominion, your heir, uh, your uh, inheritance, your everything. Put it down, he told Adam. So that's what Adam was supposed to do. And so Adam knew this. That's why you read the story of the Good Samaritan where, where it's talking about, it's the story of Adam's fall. And he comes from Jerusalem, headed to Jericho, and he, he joins thieves. It said he fell among them. It doesn't say they attacked him. It said he fell among them. He lighted among them. In other words, he joined up with them. It said then they turned on him, wounded him, leaving him half dead, knowing good and evil. They stripped him of his raiment, not his money, his raiment. And it said, they left him half dead. The priest came by. The priesthood couldn't save him. The Levite came by. The Levitical law couldn't save him. But it took, it said, but the Samaritan in his journeys came by. Well, a Samaritan was a man uh, whose mama was Jewish, but his daddy was something else. And Jesus was comparing it to himself saying, my mother's Jewish, but my father's God. And he took him and he, he, bound up his wounds and he took him to the comforter, the innkeeper. And he told him, here's enough to keep him for two days. And one day is as a thousand years. A thousand years is as one day. Here's enough to keep him for at least 2000 years. If he owes any more and I found many longer in my coming, I'll repay it when I get there. So this whole thing, everybody knew what this was about. Everybody. Adam knew that was his job, that was his war to stop the seed of the serpent coming. That was his, and it all came from the song of Isaiah. And so he, he introduces a, a woke agenda. He introduces an identification. You're as God. You can identify with anything. You can do this. You can do that. Then you start to get over, and, and Genesis 3, and the prophecy comes out. And the woman was deceived. The man sins. They both fall into sin. And God comes on the scene and says, let me tell you something. This is why God gave him dominion over everything that creeps. When he looked at him and he said this, he said, what have you done? What have you done? Actually, when he came through the garden and said, Adam, where are you? He, in Hebrew, you can see the words he's saying, confess to me what you've done. 
showing that there one day sin will be forgiven by confession. Adam blamed the woman. The woman said it was the serpent. Now they all knew that his job, their job was to have dominion and subdue the earth. Put that thing down that it does not get in this planet. And Adam joined them. He committed treason. He failed. So the Lord just gave the prophecy. He said, but her seed, I'm going to put a war between your seed and her seed. And her seed will bruise the head of your seed. Talking to that serpent. And he didn't explain it. Because they knew what he meant. That was his job. Now watch this. Now you go through the scripture and you find in Genesis 6 hybrid beings being uh, crossbred. And, and if you could really read it the way it is, so they took them wives whom they chose, fallen angels and this and that. And they were involved with, with uh, governors and mayors and all kinds of things and officials. And they got involved with the government and they did these experiments and they started experimenting until they produced these giants and so forth. And these giant reptiles were back then. And you see all this, the seed of the serpent. And even when David fought Goliath, the, the ancient teaching says Goliath had a hundred fathers and one dog. They were mixing genetic codes, all this kind of stuff, all to do one thing. The war has never changed. It's still the same war. And just when you think it's not, look at the, the crap they did at the Paris Olympics, my friends. Look at how they portrayed the Last Supper with all the blatant mess that they did. They even put in gender identity and let that man beat that poor girl like he did. They did all these things. They keep showing these things every time when you think it's almost done. Look at the WEF, the World Economic Forum. We're not talking about, you know, Jim's all night tire shop back here or, or a bike shop somewhere. We're talking about the World Economic Forum with power, money and power that can control worlds and whole economies and they bring a shaman witch onto the stage and blow on each one of them's head and 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 all this kind of stuff. And those people wasn't looking at it like it was a joke. They leaned forward for her to blow on them and just close their eyes. They know what they're doing. It's all back up here in the realm of the spiritual wickedness and high places. They know exactly what they're doing. Somebody knows. And that's the global agenda, the WHO with Shiva at their table, talking to China. Now, you know, in 2017, now you know why China's in it. CERN with the, with the Hadron Collider and all of that built on the Temple of Apollo underground with Shiva outside and that mock-up human sacrifice that took place at CERN, whether it was a mock, they say mock-up. I'll tell you what, man, if any more mocking up and it would have been real, you understand. And then the dedication of the Gothard Tunnel and where they opened, it's called the Gothard Portal. And when they opened it up, they recreated the ceremony of Pan, bringing him out of hell. And after they brought him out of hell, complete with their orgies and all, then, they, then the pandemic hit and so forth. They know what they're doing. And it's all for one war. It's still one war. And that is to bring in the seed of the serpent. Now that's the way it is. And that's what's going on. And the only way Satan can do it is change times and laws. He thinks to change the times and the laws. Timelines. <clears throat> you know, timelines started becoming recognizable to people. Uh, some of it, and like it, some of you will remember the death of, of uh, the comparisons of the death of John F. Kennedy and, and Abraham Lincoln, how they were both elected in the same year. They both had, their vice presidents had the same last name. They both had, a, one of them had a secretary Lincoln, one had a secretary Kennedy or somebody in their cabinet. They were both killed on a Friday. They 
both slain uh, uh, by an assassin that favored this these horrible civil rights things. Both of them died in the middle of a civil rights era. Uh, both of them were warned not to go to where they went that night. Uh, Lee Harvey Oswald shot Abraham Lincoln, uh, killed him in a, uh, they shot him in, uh, let's see, how did it go? He shot him from a warehouse and hid in the theater. Uh, John Wilkes Booth shot Abraham Lincoln in a theater and hid in a warehouse. Uh, John Wilkes Booth um, killed President Lincoln at Ford's Theater, and President Kennedy was killed in a Lincoln Ford. And both of them's wife was present with them when they died. And both of them had conspiracies around their death at who did what, who shot who. And now look at this, a, a, a hundred years apart it took place. It was so remarkable that they minted a Lincoln-Kennedy penny. And everybody says, ah, it's just coincidence. There is no such thing as a coincidence. And I'm going to tell you something. If there was one, that surely wasn't it. But we begin to see, recognize patterns, times, laws of harvest. Well, then you get up to uh, Ahab and Jezebel. You know, Ahab was had the crown. Jezebel had the power. Both of them, they ruled in Israel in the days of uh, where they sacrificed children to the god, false god Moloch and Baal, and it proliferated in their days. Uh, there was a land scandal in their days. Somebody came up murdered in that land scandal. Uh, it was over a vineyard. Uh, Ahab was wounded in the middle of his office, but he managed to hold himself up to the end of the day. At the end of the day, they washed his chariot out with uh, the blood in it, and the dogs licked up the blood of his chariot. And then his wife decided she wanted to run the nation, so she went back to the palace. But her own people, there was a prophecy given, and that dogs would eat her by the wall of Jezreel. And so her own people threw her off of the wall. God had raised up a war captain in their days, his, he was called the son of Nimshi, which means the son of one extricated or one freed from prison. We would say a restraint, or I would say freed from prison, and it would fit that. And so then they threw her off the wall. Two or three eunuchs, it says, threw her down. Jehu ran over her. Now you fast forward into modern times, you have Bill and Hillary Clinton back in 92 and so forth as it started. Everybody, he had the power, he had the title, she had the power. During their day, abortion, the killing of children, sacrificial, uh, and these abortion mills climbed to an all-time high. In their days, there was a land scandal, whitewater. During that time, somebody came up murdered. After that broke out, they vacationed at Martha's Vineyard. So there's a vineyard involved. And you start seeing this time. <clears throat> he gets impeached in the middle of his second term, but he manages to stay in office to the end of his term. Or do I have your attention yet on timelines? He thinks to change times and laws. Then you start seeing these timelines. And so it goes on and on. God raised up a war captain famous from being freed from prison, John McCain. He campaigned when, when, when she went back and wanted to run the nation. He campaigned against her. When she started her campaign, they erected the Arch of Baal in the Central Park in New York. The same things. And then he, but watch now, when it got up to the point where her own people threw her off the wall, two or three eunuchs threw her off the wall, then the, the war captain didn't run over her. And her own people threw her down and put up Barack Obama in her place. And right there, a timeline was stolen. Satan thinks to change times and harvest laws. So he stole the timeline. If Jehu had, when Jehu actually ran over Jezebel, there were 28 years of peace. That's the number of eternity, 28. When John McCain failed to run over her, a timeline was seized and one of the eunuchs became the president, the leader. And we had no clue what to do next because the timeline had changed.
there was nothing to record it afterward. We couldn't see what it would result in. And two or three, the Bible says, that he would have two or three terms. Well, he had two known, but a third one was done through another man. Now watch this. The timeline was changed when he refused to, to destroy ISIS. When he refused, when Obama refused to destroy ISIS, Satan's timeline was messed up to bring in the seed of the serpent. When he refused to destroy ISIS, he became the like Saul who refused to destroy the Amalekites in the time of two kings began. And I don't have to go through that because you already know it. And so the timeline started changing. The seed of the serpent came in during that pandemic, through that sickness, and it was a likened to snake venom and so on and so on. And it went, it went, it went, it went until it started trying to change the DNA, they said in people. I didn't, I wasn't the only one who said that. Medical people said that, that it had the, it could alter DNA and rewrite it. Noah Harari started saying, we're going to make a hybrid human. It's obvious what they were going to do. And he said, it'll be so real that one day you just pull a screen down and everything in, in your perception is going to change. Everything would just change. And it would be in your perception. And then he said, we don't need so many humans anymore. We, we just need them for data. We just need them for this and that. So genetic codes were offered to people. Let us have your DNA. So they did that for years. All this is to bring in this upper echelon. Now Satan is after a timeline. He's after the time of David and Saul. And that's why they were going, the, the only way to get rid of David. Some of you need to go back and watch the time of two kings. A lot of people posted that now. And it's being talked about a lot of everywhere, a lot of places about the time of two kings. And so Satan has recognized a new timeline. And so when Barack Obama stepped into the time of Saul, it changed his timeline. And we could nobody knew what to do. Satan couldn't, he scrambled now. So the time of two kings began. You know, the time of, of David and Saul, when Saul was on the throne and Samuel came to him and said, destroy the Amalekites. He wouldn't do it. And Saul had a mind. He had a sound mind, but he rebelled against God. Samuel said, your kingdom has been taken from you today and given it to a neighbor who's better than you. And then he turned to walk off and Saul reached to grab his tallit or his, his mantle, his robe, and he tore it. And when he tore it, the prophet whirled around and said, now today your kingdom has been rended from your hands. It's been rent from your hands and given to someone else. And so he left and he comes back and the Lord said, fill your horn with oil and anoint David. So he filled his horn with oil and he went and anointed David as king. But David had no, he had the kingdom. That day the kingdom left Saul and went to David. So David had a kingdom and Saul had a throne and no kingdom. David had a kingdom and no throne. And that's why you see Donald Trump had to be president one open term that you could see and another when he was still had the kingdom and no throne. It was a timeline. This whole timeline had started. Well, the second half of Saul, then Saul starts chasing David. And when he starts chasing David, he don't have a mind anymore. And the day came when Saul picked up a javelin and threw it at David. And David just moved his self out of the way. Now we've seen that play out. There was a time during the time of the two kings when Saul went to see a witch. And then we see a witch show up on Fox News throwing out tarot cards saying Donald Trump lost. And then we see all these kind of things. And Saul, there was three assassination attempts against David during the time of Saul and David. All of this time demands these events. But Satan recognizes these timelines, these parallels, and he seeks to seize it and change it. He thinks to change times 
and harvest law. So the only way to change this timeline is to get rid of David. That's the only way to do it, is to get rid of David. He has to kill David. This, Satan has to do that in order to steal the timeline. There's nothing left to him now. So what happens if David was, was out of the way? What happens if something happened to David? Don't you see? We don't know. There's no precedent for it. Satan can rewrite the Bible. He can rewrite scripture. He can rewrite his own timeline and change his own law of harvest. Now, see what you're hearing me talk about today. Some of you may be thinking, well, you know, that makes a lot of sense. It's wild, but it makes a lot of sense. But there are, there are, are occultic type people in high places could hear me say this today or hearing me say this today, maybe they know exactly what I'm saying. They know it's true. They know it's true. Now that's on the highest level. And he seeks to change. He thinks to change the times and the laws. So I wanted to bring it back to you today on a global scale. The plan has never changed. The, the whole thing is still the same war. It's still the same war to bring the, in the seed of the serpent or the Antichrist. That's what all this is happening with in Israel. That's why all this is going on. Everything is moving it around. He's trying to change times and laws to bring in the Antichrist, the seed of the serpent. Now you can understand John 10.10 10 with a greater understanding. Does it mean that, does this mean individually? Yes. But look at it in the side of the plan. The whole plan has never changed. It says, the thief cometh not. Now he's a thief. So what does a thief do? He steals. So it says, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill and to destroy. To steal what? A timeline. In the overall grand scheme of things, he wants to steal a timeline. Once he does that, he steals the timeline, kills anyone involved that could, that could hinder that timeline, and then he destroys destiny. Jesus said, but I am come, or I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So in the in the scheme of a personal thing, it's true. But in the global thing, he comes to steal a timeline, kill anybody that could stop that and destroy the destiny of something. And this is where we are on the end time stage right now. This is where we are. Now, let me close with this. There's four classes of spirit. And they're listed from the lowest to the highest in Ephesians chapter 6. I'm going to go ahead and read it to you since we're closing with it. Uh, a lot of times, you know, just quoting something don't, don't do as much as reading it to you. So Ephesians 6, watch this. Verse 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, of his mighty power, the power to do anything, miracles, anything possible or impossible. It says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand, listen to this, against the wiles of the devil, the cunnings, the cunnings, the details, the wiles, the schemes, the plots that he's doing to bring in this seed of the serpent. He said that you may be able to stand against that, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Now catch hold of that but against principalities, that's the lowest spirit. Powers, that's the next one up on the, on the rung. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places. I'll show you four fingers like steps. Spiritual wickedness in high places. This is up there working with the WEF, WHO, CERN, uh, the dedication of the Gothard Tunnel, a Harari, all these people, all these things to try to bring in one global agenda, the Antichrist, the seed of the serpent. 
where Satan has a back, eyebrows, and skin. However, that's going to play out. That's what he's after. Then the next one you have up is powers. The powers are the ones that are involved in the political realms. This is where presidents, governors, mayors, all these kind of magistrates, they, they live in that under the role of, under the uh, rule of the power spirits, powers. Then you come up one more and you've got the rulers of the darkness of this world. That means to make something look one way when it's a really another way. It's an illusion. They create an illusion world. Uh, for instance, just you can see it happening right now, this illusional world, and it's delusional and illusional. <clears throat> it looks one way. Well, you can be a man, but yet you're a God, so you can be a woman. You can be a, a dog. You can be a, a dog who identifies. You can be a cat. Where they have, we even make people live in this illusion and put litter boxes in public school bathrooms. We sign, They signed into law this thing. It's an illusion. It's making everything upside down. Then you go to the highest one, spiritual wickedness in the heavenlies. That's the grand scheme of the plan that they all actually know. How many knows it coming down the line? It's on a need-to-know basis. You can almost guarantee that. So up here, you have the spiritual wickedness in high places, the, the grand plan. The next one down is to create an illusional world where everything is an illusion. Good is bad. Bad is good. This looks like this way. Spin it to look this way. Do it this way. And it's all uh, the pandemics. Everything is illusional. Then you come down to the powers. Powers is where the politics are. Powers is the last level before it's handed to men. Now, what does the name powers mean? And that's, it's, it's a spirit that, that causes you pain, a spirit that dreams up ways to cause you pain. These are the powers that implement the bidding of that above it into everyday life. And the last one are principalities. That's the ones that live underneath the political line. It's where everyday man exists. Principalities, that means demons over palities. Remember, you've, you've seen those when Jesus came in and dealt with some of those in the madman of Gadara. He said, they said, don't send us out of this region over the palatine and so forth. And so you, you look at it, and now you can tie it all to, to two more of the fours. It's always in fours, four corners of the earth, four spirits you wrestle with, four levels of authority, so forth. Then you get into Revelation chapter 20, it says that dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. So the dragon is, is uh, it means one who charms you, who that's the lowest form. It draws your gaze off. Then when your gaze is off, the next one is that old serpent. This is the power uh, of spirits coming up now. This is the ones that dreams up ways to cause you pain. Then you see the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, the liar. That's the rulers of the darkness of this world to make one thing look one way when it's another. And then Satan. It says the dragon that will serve it, which is the devil, and Satan. That's up here. Satan. It's those that he accuses you of your past, all failures. So you've got all these four spirits that work together. You've got four uh, levels of authority. You've got all of these things that working together to bring it to pass. And that's why the political realm is so sought after to be controlled. Because whoever rules the political realm controls the affairs of men. And without controlling the affairs of men, the seed of the serpent could never enter the earth. And that's where we are right now. I hope you got something out of that today. I hope it, you know, I just trust sometimes when I have to just, they say they're not hearing anything here. I see a note that says we're not hearing anything. Oh, is this not it? They, maybe they can't hear me. Let me know in the chat. Yeah. Well, we've put this thing together. 
<laughs> Listen, we are coming to you from remote places right now. But you know it's live. You know this is all live. And I want I want you to be able to receive from what was said today. This was a this was it was deep. I know it was deep. And it was heavy. But I would love to hear your response in the chat if you can if you can. Because I would like for you to to be getting this. Hallelujah. Well, before we leave the air today, I want to I want to invite you to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then the Bible says this. If you believe in your heart, God has raised Jesus from the dead. And you confess with your mouth that you that he is your Lord, you'll be saved. So why don't you just simply do that? Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and personal Savior. I give you my whole life. Forgive me of my sin and let me start brand new again. Hallelujah. And if you do that and you meant that, then he has come and your life will never be the same again. You know, there's something available to you if you don't stop there. You can, I mean, that's a journey. That right there, he is the door. Man, once he saves you, why don't you say, Lord, I want to speak in them tongues the way I see them other people do. I want to operate in those gifts of the spirit that way. Well, you can do that too. It's as simple as saying this, you know, John the Baptist said, there's one coming after me that'll baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire. And so in the upper room, it said tongues of fire, like as a fire set down upon them. And they begin to speak in tongues. It's all over the, the scripture. It's all in the book of Acts. And, and so you can do that. You just say, Lord Jesus, baptize me in the Holy Ghost and fire with the evidence of speaking in other tongues as the spirit tells me what to say. And they just start thanking him for it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for baptizing me in the Holy Ghost. And then whatever sounds you hear, just begin to speak them. Now you're praying mysteries hidden in God. And you can pray like that one person who was dealing with someone that was in an insane asylum. And that, that person was just drawing on their face with, with lipstick. And the woman was trying to, or the person was trying to minister to them, trying, couldn't get through. So they just stopped and started praying in tongues. And when they did, that person drawing on their face just stopped and looked at them and growled out and said, you speak in a language that we can understand. Satan is afraid of tongues and he's afraid of words. But you can walk in the power of God unafraid because you are his heir. And he loves you. Come boldly to the throne of grace that you may be able to obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Amen. Well, today, before we go, uh, we close this broadcast. If you'd like to give today, I want you to know that everything works in the laws of harvest. As you sow a seed, then it it grows up and becomes. And it don't depend, that don't depend on any banks that don't depend on any government of a man. It depends on the laws of God. See, everything you ate today came through the government of God. The government of God is seed, plant, and harvest. When Jesus taught his doctrine in Mark 4, he said, behold, a sower went out to sow. Everything's about a seed and, and harvest. Everything you ate today came through that. Everything you're wearing, all your clothes came through that. Uh, you came through that system. Everything about the existence here comes through plant a seed and grow a harvest. Well, Luke 6, 38 says this. It says, as you give. Now, that's not only money. That's anything. But aren't you glad it pertains to money? Aren't you glad it has something to do with finances too? Why? Because, let me show you why the Lord wants you to dominate money. He don't want it to have you. He wants you to have it. The Bible doesn't say, yeah, listen, well, listen how the scripture says it. It says he has given you the power to get wealth, not for wealth to get you, but for you to get it. So there's power to get it. 
So here's what it says in Luke 6, 38. Listen to this. It says, give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Start it over. Give, and it, it shall be given to you. Shall men give unto your bosom for the same measure you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. It is anything you give, anything you give. If you need friends, give friendship. It will be measured to you again. Good measure pressed down, shaken together. Whatever it is you need, that's what you give. And it, the it you gave will be measured back to you. And that has to do with finances too. The Lord wants you to have the wealth because there's nothing in this planet that can be done without it, which shows you there's nothing in this planet Satan can't do unless he that he can do unless he can get his hands on it. Notice the top echelons that keep promoting this stuff is World Economic Forum. It's always has to do with money. Always has to do with money. So the Lord would want you to have it. Hallelujah. So whatever it is, whatever you're going to give today, it shall be given to you again, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Now, if you're a tither, I want to speak the, the blessing of the tithe over you. It's Malachi chapter 3. I don't, I don't know exactly where we are on all this today. I'm just going to read it to you right out the word, straight out the word says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, the Lord of the organized armies of heaven. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Now just hold up your hand now if you're a tither and a giver, and I'm going to lead you in these prayers. Say, as I give, it shall be given to me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto my bosom. For with this same measure I'm giving, it'll be measured to me again. Say, I believe it, I receive it. I call it done in Jesus' name. Now, here's your prayer for the tither. Say this, I bring all my tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in the house of the Lord. And I prove you now, Lord, Lord of hosts, open me the windows of heaven that there shall not be room and pour me out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Rebuke the devourer for my sake that he shall not destroy the fruits of my ground. Neither shall my vine cast her fruit before the time in the field. You said it, Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call me blessed, for I shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Now just lift your hands up and thank him for preparing a way for us, no matter what's going on in the world. And I want to leave you with this today, my friends. My partners, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You know, I, I'm, I endeavor to bring you details from the word, from a prophetic flow of what Satan's doing, what God is doing, and how you can be a part of what the Lord is doing. And I, I tell you these things so you not be afraid. Don't be afraid. Stand up and tell. Just speak out if you have to do it in your living room. Take your Bible. Speak out and say, in the name of Jesus. Write down Philippians 2, 9, 10, and 11. Commit it to memory so that you can stand there and say, Jesus has been given a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And start saying it, you seed of the serpent, we bind you, we cast you down. You're not coming in on our watch. I plead the blood of Jesus over my nation, over our leaders, over our, our families, over all the earth. This is our inheritance. It don't belong to you, Satan. So in Jesus' name, you bow your knee.
to the name of Jesus. Everything in heaven, everything in earth, and everything in hell, bow your knee in Jesus' name. Everything under the earth. Hallelujah. Well, I guess that's all today on this 11th hour. Uh, I've come to you from a remote location, and um, I just really have enjoyed being with you. I, uh, I look forward to being with you again on the next 11th hour. Hallelujah. We're going to be uh, closing today with a, a prophetic word. Is this the Erdogan one? Yes. We're going to be closing with that today because, you know, Turkey, where the throne of Satan actually came from, that's in Berlin now, they are already threatening Israel. And the Lord had given us a word for Turkey way back before this threat came in. So we want to close with that today and let you know something that Israel is forever. Do not think it's going to fall. Israel is forever, and we love you. Jesus loves you, and never forget that God is absolutely good. Shalom and shalom.